Hello, welcome to TYP Art Discovery. Today, I'm going to take you to look at a lot of flowers and leaves that I discover from exhibition presented by Chaumet, the famous French jewelry house in Paris this summer with the support of Beaux-Arts de Paris. The exhibition was named Végétal, l'école de beauté, which means in English, botanical, observing beauty. So it's an exhibition actually that paid a tribute to the wonderful botanical world, the nature that surrounds us. But what's more, as a human being, we never just simply observing the nature. We always try to capture and imitate the beauty into all kinds of forms of art, whether it's painting, sculpture, or even jewelry design. And this is at this occasion that the exhibition managed to reunite a large selection of artworks in all kinds of forms that I'm going to show you some of the best from this exhibition. I wanted to start with the Renaissance time because it is really from the moments on, people, they became very keen to explore the nature, especially to understand how it works and the rules behind those nature environments. This including observing, you know, the flowers, the leaves, the plants, and to capture them um, in a very met meticulous as well as scientific way. So here we have a botanical study that was made by the Italian artist Girolamo Pini. So we know very few of this artist. Um, they're only uh, rare works that are left now. There are three of his botanical studies that are in the um, Decorative Arts Museum in Paris. And we look on the screen is one of them. So we know that uh, Pini was from Florence and he was active in the early 17th century. And from his painting, what's magnificent is look at the details that he managed to capture every plant, those flowers, the leaves, and can you see there are also little butterfly on the screen, as you can see here, that is among the flowers. So Pini it was really like, you know, an artist who painted so well, or a painter who knew the botanical science. And what's interesting is, as a fashion at the time um, in the painting art, Pini also noted the names of every flower. Uh, you see that he numbered every plants in the painting and put on their name. And he presented them um, on a piece of paper, the sort of like a sticking on a board, but this is a typical and trompe l'oeil effect that is very interesting. What we know is also that Penny definitely, you know, observed all these flowers, spent a lot of times in the Medici gardens in Florence, um, because the Medici family, they reunited a lot of different plants from different regions, countries, in order for people to observe and understand the nature. And it's wonderful to see how their investment were paid off, um, that is translated onto this canvas. We have Penny with his painting genius, you know, managed to plant these flowers on an oil canvas that we were still able to see that um, almost, well, more than four centuries uh, later, actually five centuries later. And next to it, I have another painting that I liked a lot from the exhibition, which is from another Italian artist, Giuseppe Archimboldo. You probably have already seen his paintings because it's so easy to recognize and you will never forget because of its originality. Um, Archimboldo uh, is very famous. You know, his signature style is to compose these portraits of people that are uh, using different flowers, plants, or even vegetables. So here you are looking at the young man uh, who presented spring because spring is the first season of the year. That's why we have a young man um, who also celebrated his youth. And what I find interesting is you can find all those beautiful flowers, including some vegetables that are typical of the season of the spring, 
It's such a joyful portrait as you can look at these details. Even the frames were, were, were you know, formed by the flowers. It's simply magnificent. It's really during the Renaissance time. People, they wanted to celebrate the nature and they want to understand it in order to live in harmony with it. And I think this is a spirit that we should still remember today, you know, instead of exploiting the nature or try to control it. What we should do as human and uh, together with the other living species you know we should find a sustainable way and live really in harmony with the nature and now let us jump into the 19th century um, with the arrival of the photography in the 19th century the artist did receive a new challenge it's no longer about painting the resemblance but they focus more on their impressions of what they saw because in their painting they try to put their own emotion their impressions instead of, you know, just to copy what is in the nature, so they can, um, you know, overcome the challenge the posed by the photography. And this is also the birth of the Impressionism in France. Here we have an exceptional painting uh, from Gustave Caillebot, a French Impressionism artist. Actually, Caillebot, he was at the same time an artist, a painter, but also a collector. So he was very active in the Impressionism group. Um, Guy Bot grew, grew up actually in a pretty wealthy family and uh, his family had a property in the Paris suburb area which enjoyed a beautiful countryside and that is how Guy Bot was very, since very early, was initiated, you know, into this beautiful nature including gardening. Later on in his own house, Gaibot also had a greenhouse and he would even paint it, you know, the doors, um, the panels for decoration of his own house all around the theme of botanical. Here we have a white and yellow chrysanthemums that he painted um, in 1893 um, towards the end of his life. And when you look at the details of it, you, you can, we can feel, um, you know, this fresh brush strokes and the harmony of the combination of colors between white, yellow and green. Caillebot is capturing his impression of the nature, of the beauty of the flowers. And you may not know that actually it was Caillebot who introduced the passion of gardening to Claude Monet who later on had his beautiful water lilies gardens in Giverny and uh, who painted, you know, only painted water lilies uh, in a large part of his later career. And together with um, Guy Bot, beautiful flowers, I have also selected a fine jewelry. Um, as you can see on the screen, this beautiful diamond flowers that was made in 1830 or 1840. Um, as I said, you know, humans, we always try to capture the beauty and immortalize the natural beauty because the flowers, their life is so short, their beauty is sort of ephemeral, which makes them even more precious. So here you are looking at a wonderful um, diamond, um, gold, silver, emerald brooch that was actually also a central ornament from a tiara, but you can convert it into a brooch. It was designed by Jean-Baptiste Fossen, uh, who was a French jewelry designer. And today, this beautiful brooch is in the collection of Chaumet, um, the French jewelry house. And when we look at the nature, you know, you can truly find the genius of the nature, the creator is just unexplainable. And sometimes you may also find that the genius of some artist, it cannot be explained either. And this is the case of the self-made French painter, Serafine Louis. And here you're looking at one of her masterpieces, um, this beautiful clusters of grapes that she painted in the early 20th century. So Sehafina Louis, she was also known as Sehafina de Saint-Lys um, because it was particularly in the little town called Saint-Lys that she was discovered by a gallerist and she started to make a fame, you know, into the art community. However, as for Sehafina herself, uh, she never went to any painting lessons or any art school. She worked as a servant um, 
And uh, it just came to her all naturally that she wanted to paint. So she went to board. So she she went to buy paint. She went to buy the canvas, and she started to paint all naturally. You know, very spontaneously in her spare time. Imagine as a work servant, right? You work long days, and in the evening time,、um, with a very dim oil lamplight, you. Put the oil. You put the canvas around, and then you started to paint. When you have in the head, everything just becomes so nature and flow out of her mind and under her brush. And look at these details. I'm always fascinated by Sarah Vit because look at all all these details, and you can feel the vivacity, the dynamism of these grapes, of these flowers. They are like you know trembling until the end, and, and there's so much life. And somehow、uh, I ask, I wonder where this genius came from. And Zeha Fina, she just simply said that her angels that told her to do so. So maybe God does exist, and that's how Zeha Fina, you know, as a very loyal for follower of the God, you know, just translated、um, what God see in her eyes and put that onto the canvas、uh, to share that with all of us. And together with、um, these beautiful grapes, this painting of Sehafine, there is another jewelry that particularly drew my attention during the exhibition. As you can see on the screen, is is this beautiful、um, diamond fern leaf brooch that is designed by the French designer Frédéric Boucheron, which is also a very famous jewelry house. You may know the name. So this brooch、um, was designed and. And、created in the late 19th century, it shows a fern leaf. But what I really love is look at those details. Again, we can feel the life still. You know, it's it's under this leaf until each vein. But suddenly, the life stopped. It's like you have Snow Queen who touched it, and the leaf got frozen instantly while capturing still all the full liveliness. You know, within it. And I find this is really amazing, not just because it's diamond. And there is one for exhibition,、um, botanical observing beauty.、Um, there's not only oil paintings, jewelries. There are also art objects from all over the world, like what you have on the screen. It is a jade cup、uh, that is from the late 17th century, so the Ming Dynasty in China. As you may know, jade has Um, is well known in China since the prehistorical time, and it enjoys, you know, a high reputation for being able to purify on、um, the soul、um, for its curing effects. And when we describe, you know, some qualities within the gentleman,、uh, we would say, you know, they are as tender as pure,、um, like a jade. So jade is a very important, precious. Stone that is highly appreciated in the Chinese culture. No wonder it has been chosen、um, as the material for a lot of art objects, like this beautiful cup in the form of a beautiful flower. As you can see in the center,、um, it's so vivid. And imagine you're going to drink wine, drink tea with this cup. Gosh, it's such a luxury, but it's also such a celebration of the natural beauty. It's really like you know to immortalize the ephemeral blossom of the flower. And what can be a better material to use than jade? You know this magical this stone which have a spiritual aura. And to pair with this jade cup. Um, I have selected this ivy leaf brooch, which was made by Joseph Chomet, so from Chomet's maison.、Um, it is made with platinum, gold, diamonds, and chalcedony. What I love it is the choice of the material. Yes, of course, we have the diamond that is shining, but when you look at the core, the center, and、um, the the leaf of, of you know this brooch. It it really feels like it's so natural,、uh, and it gives me the feeling like it's a fossil that has been captured for centuries, for millennia, and it's still there. As you know, I believe have a very special meaning、uh, in the European culture. Actually, during the、uh, ancient Greek times, 
you may remember we have gold, um, poets, muses. Um, they would wear, you know, a crown made of ivy leaf. And people also offer ivies to bride and grooms because it symbolizes, you know, everlasting life, devotion, fidelity, and loyalty. And it's so wonderful to have this leaf brooch, which is so nature and so beautiful that I find. Well, as we have um, looking at together, you know, some of the best highlights from this exhibition, here comes to the end. As I said, we humans, we have living the nature. So we've been observing and try to capture the nature for such a long time, even our ancestors. So here, what I have selected is on the left side, you have a um, Neolithic war painting. The, it was discovered in Algeria and uh, dated between 3900 BC. It's very interesting to look at these details because you can find the plants, the trees that are depicted by our ancestors, as well as their activities. And I think back then, you know, our ancestors, they were already enjoy the nature, um, but it, it was more from a naive um, perspective. And of course, with all, because, you know, um, their destiny is, was really controlled by the nature. However, with time passes by, especially since the uh, industrial revolutions, uh, since the 20th centuries, nowadays we somehow have the illusion that we can control the nature. There's no problem at all. We human beings, we are the master of the world. But is this true? Of course not. I think you were already convinced um, by looking at, you know, the more and more frequent natural disasters the caused by the climate change um, since these few years. And this is a warning message on the right side that you actually get through art from the French artist Jean-Claude Ruggiero. Um, in this minimalist style art uh, installation or sculpture, we have this uprooted tree without any leaves attached, you know, to a rock. And well, what's the meaning of it? Um, the artist actually named this sculpture or installation as gison, which means lying, so lying down in, in, in French word, because we do have this uprooted tree that is, you know, lying horizontally. But gison is also a French word designating the sculpted figure on a tomb. And this leads me to, you know, think, to wonder, is this a message from the artist that, you know, if we continue what we do today without paying attention, without caring the earth, um, will this beautiful botanical world, this beautiful leaves and flowers all disappear? And in the end, we'll also only have a tomb, um, like those sculpted figures, you know, that we, we put on the tomb in order to um, pay them in memory of the past. And I do hope this will not be the future um, for the next generations. Well, here comes the end of um, this episode. I do hope that you enjoy the selection of artworks. That's from the exhibition presented by Chaumet in Paris, named Botanical Observing Beauty. So please go on, observe the beauty nature and also take care of the earth. Let's make it a better place and try to live in harmony with it. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye bye.